Hello, okay, welcome to the last installment of the Selkie series. I just realized that my sweatshirt is the same color as the wall, but that's okay, we're just gonna go with it. Um, so if you haven't seen the previous two videos, I did a dress analysis of the Selkie Ritz gowns, and then I've also taken a pattern off of the same gowns. So if you are looking for a little bit more in depth on how these dresses are made and like what the pattern looks like, then you should go check out those because this is gonna be primarily a making montage ASMR style video with some thoughts and discussion at the end, I think. <laughs> so this is kind of the culmination of this series where I take everything that I previously discovered with the dress analysis, and the dress analysis is more of a, is this dress worth it? How did they make this dress? And like what all went into the actual construction of this gown? The pattern video is what it sounds like. It's taking a pattern. But for this video, I'm gonna be taking the knowledge that I got from creating those other two videos, and I'm going to make my own version of this gown. Uh, we'll see how accurately I can recreate it. I'm hoping pretty accurately because I now know the process and I know the pattern, uh, so we will just see how that goes. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> 
This raffle is taking up so many pins, I'm having to open a new box. Look at this sad empty pin cushion. We're gonna add hanging loops because it's important and Selkie left theirs out. I'm gonna measure how far this needs to go up to support the gown and then also the elastic in the sleeves. So I don't want this to be any longer than where the elastic sits naturally because then the elastic will still be taking some of the pressure of the like weight of the dress. So instead I want this to be just short of where that elastic will sit and then it'll be able to support the dress but it'll also let the elastic kind of just hang out on top of the hanger without like making it all droopy and sad. And right now is the best time to do it because you haven't put the skirt on yet. So I'm just gonna attach it and stitch it directly to this lining here so that when I am then stitching the skirt to it, it catches it at the same time. I'm using a synthetic grosgrain ribbon to do this. Grosgrain is a little bit stronger than satin ribbon and it won't accidentally shred when it's hanging. It's not super likely that a satin ribbon will shred, but you know, just in case this will withstand a little bit more wear and tear. Okay, so let's start with the good things because there are some bad things too, but I think that this turned out pretty well. I am happy with my pattern copying. I think that it resembles the Ruth's dress pretty closely. So there's obviously a few things that are different and like it's not perfect, but I think that I got a pretty close approximation with the pattern specifically. And then I also think that this turned out really well for my first try at making this dress. I hate making big dresses. Every time I make one, I'm like, oh wow, this is gonna be so much fun. I'm gonna have such a cute dress afterwards. And then I get to the part where I have to sew all the skirt together. And I'm like, I hate doing this. I never wanna do it again. And somehow I forget that every single time I see a big dress, I'm like, I want to make that. But I will put up with the suffering to get cute dresses out of it because this is very cute. Um, I think the sleeves look really cute. I, they're a little bit uh, floppier than I wanted, but I think they generally have a really cute shape and they look good off shoulder and on shoulder, so that's good versatility. I think that the adjustments I made in the cups I maybe made went a little bit too far. Uh, I guess that's not part of the good column, but I think I made them a little bit too small, uh, so I need to find a good middle ground between what the Selkie dresses already have and what my actual bust size is because the dresses that I got from Selkie are a little bit too big, whereas this dress is a little bit too small because you can I don't know kind of see can you see my bust you can kind of see that this underwire is not actually sitting up against my chest it's still hovering away so that if it fit better it would probably you know actually sit against there the part of the problem could also be that I used an old bra and I'm not sure if that bra still fits me but oh well uh, it it works fine and it looks okay, so I'm not really too concerned. I like the fullness of the skirt. I think it's really cute. And I love the ruffle. I mean, I hate doing the ruffle, but I love the end result of the ruffle. While I did deviate a little bit on the zipper and some other things, I think that all of my deviations turned out really well. Like the zipper looks good, even though it's not the right color. So the zipper is not the correct color at all, like obviously, but this is what I had on hand. I wasn't gonna go out and buy more zippers and it's not a huge deal, I don't think. Like, usually it will be covered by my hair, so I'm not too concerned. The installation of the zipper went very smoothly and it looks very good. The color of the zipper, not great. <laughs> 
Uh, so, you know, wins and losses. For things that I would like to improve in the future, so I guess this is the bad list, what I said before about uh, increasing the bus size, I think that would be a good thing to do in the future. Getting longer underwires, because this underwire only goes to about here, so that's not quite right. Uh, it should extend all the way through the cup, but it doesn't. But that was again using stuff that I had on hand so that I didn't have to go out and purchase stuff. So the biggest qualm that I had is that the fabric didn't really act as I had expected it to. I bought this fabric on Etsy. It's kind of a gamble on what it will actually turn out to be. This was listed as like a crinkle organza, which I have never heard of existing, so it should have been the first tip off. But it was shiny and it was pretty, so I decided that I wanted it anyways. It's definitely more of a chiffon. So chiffon, the big difference between chiffon and organza is that chiffon is a lot drapier and a lot softer than organza. It behaves a lot more like the cotton dress actually. So even though sh the chiffon is kind of more sheer and it is also in synthetic, unlike the cotton which is very opaque and very uh, not synthetic, <laughs> it has the similar drape whereas it's kind of living under its own weight whereas organza is very light and it will just kind of float on air. You can find chiffons that do that but you kind of need a really light chiffon and a very fine chiffon to do that which would have not like it would have been too see-through for this but because the chiffon that i'm using is like fairly heavy it's a pretty dense chiffon and whatever i think it's polyester probably they what they used is heavy like it's a heavy material so it kind of falls under its own weight and for the most part it's okay like the sleeves i don't mind that they're a little bit like droopy drapey whatever um the bodice is fine. Um, mostly where this is a problem is the skirt. So rather than doing what I wanted where it's like really fluffy and like looks like it's floating, it has a lot of weight to it. It is like the cotton dress where it really just hangs. The other problem is that when you cut a circle skirt, very frequently what happens is that your bias areas will stretch out. And that's normal. That's how making skirts works, especially if you're making things that go through the bias a lot parts of the circle that travel through bias rather than traveling through grain or cross grain are dipping lower at the hem than the cross and straight grain stuff do. This would normally not really be that much of a problem because it wouldn't be so weighed down by other stuff, but because this ruffle is massive and it's so heavy, it's really pulling on that bias. So my hem is very uneven. <laughs> Maybe I will fix it someday, but I probably just won't. Um, it looks really good when it's twirling, so I'm not too concerned. But the ways to fix this are to let it hang out for a little bit. So you do your skirt and you like let it just sit on a hanger for a few days so that the bias stretches out. Beavet! Hi! Do you wanna help me? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I know, you're so cute. So if you let the skirt hang on a hanger, then the bias has a few days like to stretch out and hopefully get all of it stretching out of its system. I did not have the time to do that. I also just forgot that that was a thing you can do. <laughs> so my bias is stretching out as I wear it and that's not great. So parts of my ruffle and parts of my hem are very uneven. It kind of like goes up and down and wavy. Not ideal. Um, you can see that in the Selkie dresses, they did let it hang out because the hem is very even and it goes in a straight line. There's not all of this waviness like in mine. So, you know, that's another reason that you pay a lot of money for these dresses is because they do know and remember to do these techniques. <laughs> Once you've let it hang out and stretch out, then you can take it up from the waist seam. So then you can just like make sure that everything is shortened by the waist if you've already got the ruffle on it. If you don't already have the ruffle on it, then you can just trim it from the bottom so that everything is even again. So the two ways you can do it, I did not do either of them. So maybe someday I will go back and take apart the waistband and like, not waistband, um, I'll take apart the waist seam and redo the skirt so that it does sit uh, with the ruffle all even, but that mm, that's a problem for future Minji. The other thing that I kind of messed up was that I assumed that the skirt was only gathered one and a half times. That's not true. This ended up being pretty flat. I don't know if it was because of the fabric or just because that was just not enough gathering, but this definitely needs to be like a two or two and a half times gather. So I had been kind of conservative on how much fabric I was using. They really used as much fabric as they could. So if they're doing a two and a half times circle, that's increasing their waist circle by like radius by maybe like two three inches maybe more I'm not sure I don't know the math off the top of my head but that means that 
that pushes the rest like the hem circle way out and if you recall the hem circle was already at about 48 inches so pushing that even farther is really going to utilize the entire width of that fabric which is like that's a good thing they're using all of it i just kind of underestimated how much i would need to gather into the waist so i could have made a fluffier skirt if i had done that but i think it looks pretty good anyway so i'm not too concerned about it i'll do something different in the next one maybe uh any other issues oh uh i marked all of this fabric so i thought that it would <laughs> i thought my pencil marks would go away they're not really so you can kind of see shadowed like dark lines in all of my seams that's not good that's actually like really basic bad don't do that <laughs> and uh it's an embarrassing mistake on my part i should know better than that uh so learn from my mistake and don't do that mark very lightly so that your pencil marks don't show later i've been working with such solid fabrics lately that i just kind of forgot time away from school means that i forget things a lot so i this is good this is good practice and a good reminder now i probably won't make this mistake again so let's talk about the process and how long this took me uh let me get my journal so I did keep a time log. So I just added all of this up. The cutting took me about an hour and a half and then the sewing took me 19 hours. And there we go. That is about the 20 hours <laughs> that I had estimated. So that's good. We're coming in pretty on time. Oh wait, no, I had estimated 16 hours and then added some other stuff. But either way, it took me about 20 hours to make this dress. Um, the ruffle itself took like four hours. It took so long. Uh, it was such a pain. And like this fabric does not like pins, it just, I don't know if you have ever worked with fabric like this before. I have a couple times and it sucks every single time, but when you pin stuff into some fabrics, it just kind of rejects the pin and the pin just slides out over time. So it makes pinning really large amounts of things very annoying because you just have pins dropping all over your studio and then things are never where they are pinned supposed to be and it's just pain. So that was a problem with this fabric that I did not enjoy. Um, but overall the the dress took me 20 and a half hours to make which is right at your price point like if i am making 20 dollars an hour that gets me to 400 dollars easily a little bit more that's not accounting for the cost of the fabric just general overhead of operating a company it would get faster the more times i do it i probably will go faster the next recreation of this dress i will make and i am probably going to make more of these because i love this silhouette <laughs> but it's not going to get fast enough that you can really justify paying that much less. And hopefully if you are buying this on sale, I buy them on sale just like for my personal finances. But if you're like, hopefully even though those sale prices are happening, hopefully they're still paying their makers enough to be like a fair compensation. So I guess my final, final verdict, is a silky dress worth the amount of money that they charge? Yes, it absolutely is. Now that I've made this, it's definitely worth it because the labor is annoying. It's not like an easy sewing project. I don't know, corsets, I love making corsets. They're small, so they go under the machine really easily. I like doing all the corset boning and the grommeting and I really enjoy it. This kind of dressmaking, I don't enjoy so much. It's not super fun it's kind of a pain to get under the machine even if i was just looking at labor hours like yes it's worth it it's extra worth it because if i buy it from them i don't have to do it <laughs> so yes i definitely think it's worth it and i think that if unless you have a specific fabric that you want to use that selkie doesn't carry then make your own great or if you don't like have the disposable income but you got a lot of time on your hands yes make your own but if you like their patterns if you like the dresses generally if you have that disposable income and you don't have a lot of time they're absolutely worth it you should definitely buy their dresses and they're a pretty good company to support so i am 100 percent in favor i'm like now losing my voice because i don't know why it's been very dry in our house so i'm gonna wrap this up uh, if i have any other thoughts that i've forgotten to say in this video then i'll put them in the description box so you guys can read that but other than that that's pretty much all i've got so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you enjoyed this series if it was useful and helpful to you then let me know i'd love to hear some feedback if i missed some parts that you think i should have gone over a little bit more thoroughly let me know as well because i will do another one of these series in the future um i've gotten a couple requests for different brands to check out so i will probably be looking into those in the future if you have any other brands you would like to see i also also recently got a different style of selkie dress it's their puff gown so it's not as fitted through the waist it's the ampere dress with like 
the bust band and then a poofy skirt but it's a long one not a short one and if you like this video and this series please give it a thumbs up as well as letting me know if you liked it and questions comments concerns any questions especially like i feel like i could have been more thorough with this looking back on the other videos and i would like to do this again with other brands so i'm hoping that i like I can refine my videos as time goes on. <laughs> as a last aside about this dress, it's not perfect. It's my first ha attempt making it, even though like I am a professional costumer, uh, like making something for the first time is always gonna be kind of like a shot in the dark and being like, am I doing this right? And like, is what I think they did the best way to do it? Or is there a different way that I could do it that would be better? So like, it's kind of a learning process whenever you do something for the first time, even if you are a professional. So. It's not perfect, but I'm happy with it, and I am hoping that eventually I can work my way to perfecting this dress pattern, and then I can move on to a different thing. <laughs> but anyways, um, if you like this series, if you want to see more series like this, and if you want to see the other stuff that I'm doing, we've got Bridgerton coming up next, then please subscribe. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye!